In the last video, I talked a lot about diffuse lighting and how diffuse lighting takes the light vector, does the dot product with the surface normal, and then that gives us the diffuse lighting value. In order to dot a light vector with the surface normal, we have to have a surface normal. And the way we describe a surface normal in our geometry is via vertex data. So far, we've just had position. We've used position a ton. We also introduced color early on in the playlist. But now we need some more varying data with our vertex. And each vertex will have to tell us what the surface normal is at that vertex. Okay, We will need to ensure that these normals are normalized, meaning length 1, so our dot products work out nicely. Let me... See if I can demonstrate a little bit. This is a plane. We're looking at the plane from the side view. Doing the surface normal for the plane is easy because the surface normals all over the place are just the y direction. I need a vector that's pointed directly up in the y direction. For every single vertex that makes up that plane, that will be our surface normal. So our normal right here, we'll just put the value 0, 1, 0. That'll be our surface normal data for each vertex. We have our teapot. Allow me to try to draw a teapot here. I'm a little teapot short and stout. It's a good thing that Jamie is a better programmer than he is an artist. But here's a teapot, and it's made up of vertices. We've seen those vertices represented by the colors in previous videos. But the surface normals are not going to be as easy for a teapot as they are for the plane. Uh, surface normal at this location would be like this, because that's perpendicular to the surface right there. If you can imagine an infinite decimally small point right there that's perpendicular to the surface perpendicular to the surface another surface normal another surface normal another surface normal surface normal 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 hopefully you get the idea we have all these normals that represent the surface at all those locations so it's a little more interesting to do these shapes that aren't planes but most shapes in games are not planes we also have our arrow Geometry I've introduced a while ago. I'll try to draw our arrow as best as I can. Oh, that's hideous looking. Yeah, I won't quit my day job. There's the arrow. <laughs> I guess we'll see the back of the arrow head right there, too. There's the arrow. What's the surface normal going to look like for this? Well, if we're looking at the top of the arrow there, the surface normal will come straight off the top of that vertex. Straight off the top, straight up. That's pointed up. I don't know why I do that. Straight up. All these vertices will be straight up like so. But then on the side, we'll have a vertex going, or a surface normal going like that, like that. On the side, on the back of the arrowhead, the surface normal is going to come out like that, and like so. So hopefully, you're getting the idea that, oh, we, we need all these surface normals. Let me go back to our data code. Now that we have this normal as part of our vertex data here, Let's go back to our shape generator. And now everywhere that we say, hey, make a triangle, make a cube, make an arrow, make a plane, make a teapot, now I have to add all the logic to do the surface normals. So don't blink, this will be the fastest coding you've ever seen. Like I said before, doing the normal for the plane is really easy. The normal is simply a vector pointed in the y direction, so plane's easy. The arrow is simply a matter of painstakingly figure out what the normal is, depending on if we're on the top of the head, the bottom side of the arrow. Top of the head, then the normal is going to point up straight up in the y direction, bottom side of the arrow head. Then the normal will point straight down in the y direction. The edges are a little bit more complex, but a little bit of math, we figure out the normals. The triangle, I don't think we'll ever render the triangle with the lighting, but I threw the normal in here anyway. Since the triangle sits in the xy plane, then the surface normal will be positive 1 in the z direction. Positive 1, positive 1. All three vertices have positive 1 as their surface normal. Cube, same story. We just add all the normals in here, depending on which side of the cube we're on. The Normal will point straight out in whatever direction uh, the, the side is. For example, this side, all the normals point straight up, so this must be the top of the cube, so on and so forth. Here's the side of the cube, so the normals are pointing in the negative Z direction, like so. The teapot code that I brought in in earlier videos, whoever wrote this algorithm very nicely also gave us the normals as well. We say generate patches, give it a pointer to all the floats for our normals. Uh, three floats representing one normal, and so it's just a matter of adapting 
the, their representation of normals to well, our representation of normals. And that gives us the normals for the teapots. So there you go. We now have all of the surface normals for all the shapes that I've introduced in these videos thus far. Uh, and I'll introduce more shapes as we go along. But now that we have normals, let's see if we can actually look at these normals or render these normals. It's a very nice debugging trick to be able to see your normals. That's one way that I was able to make the arrow normals is when I first punched in the data for the arrow normals I actually got it wrong and so I rendered the normals and saw that they were wrong and then went back and made it right. So let me show you how to actually render the normals so we can see the normals. I added another function to shape generator called generate normals and what we do here is pass in a shape data. That shape data could represent the cube, the arrow, the plane, the teapot. It doesn't matter. I just give this function the shape data containing the data I'm about to render. And generate normals will return another shape data, a new shape data that has the vertices and the indices for the normals so that we can actually render the normals. We'll add the normals to OpenGL the same way we added the cube, the arrow, the plane. We had to add the vertex information, the index information. Well, this shape data we get back from generate normals will contain vertex and index information that we can render. And when we render it, we'll see the normals of our shape. However, we have to render lines instead. We've been rendering GL triangles. Shape data returns two points per normal. The first point is the beginning of the normal or the position of the vertex of that normal. The second point is the end of that normal. So we have to render GL lines instead of GL triangles. And there's two verts per line instead of three verts as we had with triangles. When we render a triangle, we have to render three verts with a line, we render two verts, the two verts representing the endpoints of those lines. I'll show you in a minute. I want to show you the generate normals code, though. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to take the shape data, the data, the shape data, of what we're trying to render the normals for, the cube, the arrow. It doesn't really matter. We make the new shape data that we're going to return. It's simply a matter of taking the number of vertices and the data that they gave us and timesing that by two. We're going to make two new vertices for every vertex that comes in with the shape data and why two because each line has an endpoint with two endpoints and so we need two we instantiate the array we're going to make the color white for all those vertices so our surface normals will render white and then we simply go through all the vertices and the shape data they give us and for each line we simply put the first vertex at the vertex position of the shape data coming in and then the endpoint of each line that will be our normal is simply that position plus the surface normal using some vector mass, some vector addition. Again, I'll recommend you to my engine programming, game engine programming playlist to see vector addition and how vector addition works out. And then both of those vertices, we just set them to white. It's actually a pretty simple, straightforward algorithm, or at least I hope it's simple. I hate it when people say things are simple and I look at them like, really? That doesn't seem very simple, but that is my algorithm. Go through all the vertices of the shape data coming in and put a, a, a new vertex at that position and then a second vertex at that position plus the normal. And that gives me a line that I can render. Rendering lines is pretty straightforward. I simply have to say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, all that for the indices. It's not very exciting. In fact, technically, I really don't even need indices at that point. I could just say GL draw arrays instead of GL draw elements. But I added the indices for completeness. This is a de debugging tool anyway, so I don't feel too bad about it. But now we can say, hey, generate the normals for this shape data. And then we can turn around and render those normals, and we'll, we'll see those normals coming off of our shape.